Charles Hawtrey appeared in 23 carry-on films from 1958 to 1972. He was the third most prolific star of the series. In this video, I'm going to look at Charles Hawtrey's carry-on journey. Charles Hawtrey was around 44 when he was cast as Private Peter Golightly in Carry On Sergeant, 1958. Hello. Where have you been? Well, I <clears throat> got locked in somewhere. You see, I... Oh, dear. He was sixth on the bill, and he makes an entrance 12 minutes into the film. He presents an earnest, subdued performance oh, as the polite but accident-prone okay. private. And now if you're getting things out of a horse's foot. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> a year later, Horchie was back in Carry On Nurse. With third billing, he played patient Humphrey Hinton. I say, you don't know what you've been. This is a much more energetic performance and slightly camp. He plays a radio addicted patient with lots of little set pieces, including an air piano sequence. We also see him in drag for the first time in a Carry On film. He'll return to this motive a few times in his carry-on journey. Carry-on teacher soon followed, with Hawtrey playing the second build, Mr. Michael Bean. Now, boys and girls, ten green bottles. Stand up. Up, up, up. A comfortable performance as the upright and rather prim and snappy music teacher. As we enter the 1960s, we see the release of Carry-on Constable. Hello, Gorse. Sorry I'm late, Sergeant, but I just couldn't leave home without bringing something bright and gay for the poor indisposed constables. So Charlie is pushed down the bill when Sid James joins the team. Charlie appears as Special Constable Timothy Gorse. I love Charlie's character in this film. He moves between misfit and ensemble player with absolute ease. And we also have another one of those drag sequences. This time with Hawtrey and Williams dressed as Agatha and Ethel. Laughing matter, Gorse. I say, you mustn't call me that. Hello, hello. Isn't it a lovely morning? Anything on the In 1961, Charlie played Gabrielle Dimple, employee of the Helping Hands Agency, in a rather uneven carry on film, Carry On Regardless. This film is really a sequence of set pieces, and it's not until about 45 minutes in that we get to see Charlie Hawtrey's boxing ring sequence. Charlie was suddenly dropped from Carry On Cruising. It was suggested that his fame went to his head and he wanted more money. He was replaced at last minute by Lance Percival. Even so, he was back in 1963 as Terry Pintpot Tankard in Carry On Cabby. Uh, well, let me see now. Um, first of all, I turn left into James Street, uh, right into North Road, uh, left into London Road. Okay. Right at the lights. Oh, where does that get me? Interestingly, Charlie hadn't learnt to drive, so he packed in the lessons and managed to pass his test just before filming began. Even so, the crew did notice that he was a pretty hopeless driver. At least it fitted with his accident-prone character. Carry On Jack features Hawtrey fourth build as cesspit cleaner Walter Sweetly. <laughs> Hawtrey features heavily in this film, which is nice to see as he often provides some great comic foil moments. He's now starting to play a little outside the action and we have a lovely moment when he breaks the fourth wall. She'd be a stupid car, she didn't. 1964 saw the release of Carry On Spying. Hawtrey appearing completely at home playing Agent Charlie Bind. James? No, Charlie. Number? Double O. Oh. I might be reading a bit into this film as I'm quite fond of it, but he really does appear to be enjoying himself. Now let me see. First of all, I've got to wait here, and then I've got to... Ooh. Good evening, darling. You would like to come home and see my fine old Viennese etchings? <laughs> It is mentioned in a couple of sources that Charlie collapsed on the set at one point during filming. One account said it was because he was held upside down for too long, or another account I've read suggests it was the booze. Alcohol would haunt Hawtrey throughout his career. Nonetheless, it's a great performance. They do keep us hanging about, don't they? 
We now come to the lavish carry-on Cleo. Hawtrey really throws himself into the role of the soothsayer Seneca. His set pieces are delightful and he plays well with the rest of the cast, particularly when he has a vision. He does that to great comic effect. He really shines in this one. Oh, hello, Will. Did you see anything? Oh, yes, and it was lovely. Carry On Cowboy arrived with Hawtrey only appearing in a few scenes as the Indian chief Big Heat. Oh, hello. This is one of my favourite Carry On films with so many memorable performances from all the members of the cast. But Charles Hawtrey seems a little lost in comparison. He seems unfocused, his eyes darting everywhere. He does seem more focused in the early parts of the film, but later on it just feels a little loose. Anyway, at this point he was facing the chop, but he was loved by the audiences and the press. The papers began to speculate that a new carry-on film without Hawtrey just might fail. This spooked the producers. So hastily they extended a role in carry-on screaming for Hawtrey. Morning, gents. Like a nice wash, would you? And so it was Charles Hawtrey played Dan Dan, only appearing in a few scenes. He had third billing, but his performance is almost a cameo. Hawtrey seems very confident in this film. I find that quite interesting. Now distributed by the Rank Organisation, in 1967, Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head had Charles Hawtrey playing the Duke de Pomfret. Oh, hello. This is one of those films that doesn't quite feel like a Carry On, another being the next film, Follow That Camel. Even so, Hawtrey's given some lovely moments. Standouts for me were his flirtiness at the ball, his overseeing of the duel, and, well, he really does appear to be enjoying himself in the sword fighting scene. Carry On, Follow That Camel comes next. Hawtrey in a number of scenes as Captain Lapiste. Personally, I think this film struggles with Phil Silvers in the lead. Hawtrey also seems relegated to a more supporting role in the ensemble. Hawtrey is back in one of those roles that seems like a cameo in 1967's Carry On Doctor. He plays the man with the sympathetic pregnancy, Mr. Barrett. The film itself is classic Carry On, but Hawtrey's only given a few scenes and a couple of set pieces, including a short routine at the antenatal class. Carry On Up the Khyber was released in 1968. Hawtrey plays Private James Whittle. Halt! Who goes? Who goes? Um, oh, what's the word? Oh, thank you. Who goes out? He's fine in the film and puts what he can into the role and the moments he's been given. But I wanted more from Whittle. Apparently, Hawtrey wasn't happy at all during the filming. Allegedly, he didn't speak or make eye contact with anyone, only springing to life for his own scenes. 1969's Carry On Camping is perhaps one of the most well-known Carry On films. In it, Hawtrey plays Charlie Muggins. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's one of those films where Hawtrey is cast as an outsider, a single traveller in a field of couples. Essentially, his role is all about his journey to the campsite and he has little to do afterwards. But saying that, the set pieces in his journey are really good. And, once again, he gets to break the fourth wall. Carry On Again Doctor featured Charles Hawtrey as Dr. Ernest Stoppage and Lady Puddleton. Yes, technically it's Dr. Stoppage in drag, but his character in the film is so uneven it does feel like a film of two halves. Dr. Stoppage is an unusual and slightly cruel characterisation for Hawtrey. But the film ends in great form once Hawtrey gets into drag. Hawtrey is very good in drag. 
A video on Hawtrey's carry-on journey wouldn't be complete without mentioning the TV specials. The first one came about this year, when he appeared in the TV special Carry On Christmas. I say you have got a narrow entrance. <laughs> special delivery. Lucky you are. OK, Joe. <laughs> Carry On Up The Jungle was released in 1970. Fans would have to wait to almost the end of the film to see Hawtrey, and he's in just nine scenes. Oh, hello. He plays Sir Walter Bagley. Oh, my God, it's the wife. Or rather... King Tonka. It's another one of those short cameo-like roles, really. But Charlie is great, as Charlie. Carry On Loving sees Charlie, despite having third billing, appear only in 12 scenes as private detective James Bedstop. Charlie makes the most of these scenes, donning a fake beard and getting arrested outside the toilets as he attempts to follow Sid James's character around the city. Yeah, I was looking for a man who I was following. Really? Well, in that case, sir, I think you better come along with me. Uh, no, I'm, I don't think you quite Hawtrey appeared in another TV Christmas special this year, this time a Carry On Christmas version of Treasure Island. Carry On Henry sees Charles Hawtrey play Sir Roger de Lodgerly. Oh, hello. He appears in some early bedroom scenes, but I don't think I'm stretching it to say that he's really used as a running gag throughout the film. Stretching it. Do you see what I did there? Carry On At Your Convenience was an unpopular film with the audience of the time. Although it is a solid carry on. Hawtrey plays Charles Coote, a flamboyant bathroom designer with a penchant for the odd game of strip poker. Charlie pops up here and there for some great set pieces. Great orange shirt and tie there, Charlie. 1972 saw the release of Carry On Matron. He prays Dr. Francis are good. He only has nine scenes, but they are great scenes. The consultation with Kenneth Williams' character, Sir Bernard Cutting, who thinks he's turning into a woman, is marvellous. As is the extremely playful and innuendo-laden scene between Charlie and Hattie Jakes. Sadly, though, this was to be Hawtrey's penultimate film. Carry On Abroad has Charlie in third billing, but only in nine scenes as mother's boy and drunk holiday maker oh, hello. Eustace Tuttle. It's a small role for Hawtrey to go out on and he doesn't really get to do much in the film. Hawtrey was getting increasingly difficult to work with and he was meant to appear in another Carry On Christmas TV special this year but he was pulled at the last minute over billing and his refusal to take the producer's calls. So, after 23 films, Charles Hawtrey's carry-on career was over. Perhaps he got out at the right time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. This is a tiny channel and your enthusiasm keeps me making these random videos.